Numero uno, uh, what are they? So KPI, uh, KPI means key performance indicator. Okay, there's no average or anything involved in that. A KPI, KPIs are goals that should be hit consistently. So you have a KPI, you know that if you're hitting that KPI, and I'll get into the important ones in a sec here, that is an indication you are doing things correctly. And if you're not hitting that KPI on that specific metric, then you know it's an indication that you're not doing things correctly, okay? And uh, obviously with KPIs, we need consistency. If we just hit our KPIs one week, but then we flounder for, for a month, it doesn't matter. We need consistency when hitting KPIs. KPIs are not averages of everyone that tries to sell solo remotely. Very, very key thing for the first part of this uh, um, lesson today. If you think, uh, so people ask the average, what's the average guy making in solar? What's the average person? Zero. Sales and business is a skill-based skill. <laughs> it's not a, you put a quarter in and you get a lollipop out every single time. Many people wish they could make solar sales money. Of course. Well, who wouldn't want to sell solar remotely, virtually, or even in-home and be making 5, 10K commission on every deal and do multiple deals a week or per month? Who wouldn't want to do that? Why can't they? Because not everyone's cut out for it. But a hell of a lot of people try, right? So if you take averages, the average is going to be zero. What's the average um, uh, amount that someone wins the lottery? You'll have millions of people that make zero and a very small amount of people that make a shit ton of money. Now, Solar sales is a lot easier than winning the lottery because it's skill-based, not specifically chance-based. But you get the idea. You can't use averages. A KPI is you're doing everything right. You should be hitting this metric. Whereas the average person comes in, they get no training, no infrastructure, no resources whatsoever. They don't even put any work ethic in. They try for a half an hour, one day. Uh, they get crushed and, and they don't have a, a support channel, so they quit. Right. So that's why averages don't work. Um, KPIs are the results of people that are doing things properly. So this is the beautiful thing about KPIs is because if you're not hitting your KPIs, uh, it's not because there is an, uh, you know, uh, the, the system doesn't work. It's not because your leads are bad. KPIs assume that everything is done being done properly. So you have no excuses. I love that beautiful, objective, ruthless um, uh, uh, level that we have to hold ourselves to. A KPI is... The leads are there, your systems are there, your structure is there, your strategy is there, you're doing your script properly, uh, you're not screwing around on your appointment setting or on your closing, absolutely everything is there. Okay, why aren't you hitting your KPI? No more excuses. And the only thing you can turn in uh, inside and look is, okay, well, it's, it's my fault. I'm messing up here, I'm messing up here. KPI is objective. Why are they so important? Well, using objective data, uh, you can focus, like I mentioned, energy, time, money um, is non-negotiable. If you don't know where to put your energy, time, or money, meaning that you don't know your data, you don't know where you're doing good and where you're doing bad, then you'll start devoting a bunch of resources and brain power and time and money to one area, but that's not the area that you need to increase, right? You need to develop. Very often, the most common uh, version of this is my close rate is really, really low, so I gotta become a better closer. That's one of the most common crazy myths, especially about remote solar sales. My close rate is low, so I have to become a better closer. Very often that is completely untrue. And using KPIs, it is blatantly obvious what you need to work on, which we're gonna get into that specific examples in a sec. Without knowing your KPIs, you're operating completely blindly. Uh, KPIs tell you exactly what to focus on. That's why I love them. I'm also gonna give you guys a bunch of examples today. I'll list a bunch of KPIs, and I'm gonna give you guys a few seconds to try to determine what's wrong in the example, purely based off of numbers. It's a, fa it's a fun little experiment. Uh, and KPI, uh, KPIs enable you to forecast revenue, sales, and more, right? So if you know everything that you're doing is good and you have your KPIs and you know the only thing that you need to do to hit that KPI is the fundamentals that you have, your work ethic and hitting the sales strategy properly, you can use it to uh, forecast pretty accurately, again, if you're doing everything properly, what you should be expecting over a consistent period of time. Always being conservative, obviously. Uh, never forecast that you're going to be an elite closer, an elite appointment setter, an elite solar sales god every single day of the rest of your life. But being conservative, you can get a nice 
uh, realistic understanding. And if you don't hit that again, the beautiful thing about KPI is that if everything else was set up properly, you just messed up along the process. You can't blame anyone else. So that's a bit about what a KPI is, all right? Um, why is it different than average? I've already sort of touched on this, but KPIs do not indicate the average performance of everyone that tries. So when people come in and say, what's the average person making? What is the average of this? What's the average of that? I think it's like a bit of a mindset shift because it almost sounds like people approach sales as, and solar sales as, as like, oh, well, so you're saying all I have to do is, uh, is phone, get on the phones for three hours a day and I'm gonna make this amount of money. It's like there's so many other factors there. An average, if that's the case, then every single person on this planet would just be sitting on the phone for three hours a day and making a ton of cash in solar sales. Averages do not exist in sales, KPIs do. So whenever someone asks me, what's the average of this or the average of that? What's the average that someone here does that? My response is always, uh, Here's the number that if you are not hitting this, you are doing something wrong, your KPI. You completely always, as obviously with sales and business, you have no one to blame but yourself. You completely turn it on yourself and say, okay, I know that this guy, he's got everything set up properly, he's been working his ass off to get to a level where he's very, very consistent, where he's very, very comfortable with everything and he's, he's pretty much doing everything right. Um, at any given period of time. Of course, we can always improve. Everyone messes up. I mess up all the time as well still. But you get to a level of competency, okay, that's what the KPI looks like. That's the average. So a better way to put it would be a KPI is an average of everyone that's doing things properly. And that percentage of people, because still the lack of support and proper training and resources these days is still pretty damn low compared to everyone else that actually tries to be successful and remote solar sales. Uh, KPIs have nothing to do with results of the entire industry. Um, KPIs are indicators of success as opposed to pre-performance forecasters, meaning that you can't use KPIs to um, forecast your revenue if you've never sold a blade solar deal in your life because you have no idea where you're gonna fall. Are you gonna barely hit your KPIs, standard KPIs? Are you never gonna hit them? Are you gonna be an elite solar sales closer? So it doesn't really work unless you have the data. You have absolutely no guarantee to hit standard uh, KPIs. Um, no one does, this is sale, this is a ruthless game. That's why you make so much damn money because it's not easy, but mentally and sometimes physically as well, not everyone's cut out for it. Not everyone's cut out to make a, a, a ton of money. That's just the unfortunate truth when it comes to life. Averages, however, averages are of course skewed because they're, they uh, depend on 100% of people that tried. Averages are completely useless when calculating what you could do because um, the averages are just going to be stupid low that you know, there's no point. Averages are not useful for calculating goals, minimum performance. Averages have no place in high performing solar pros data. So just laying the groundwork there, right? That is the difference between uh, KPIs and averages and, and doing that little definition just so we're all on the same page now. So let's jump in to the big three. I love the big three. I quote these so much. Um, this is a very, very nice, easy way to understand KPIs. The big three consist of, obviously, three things. Number one, booking rate. This is your top of funnel big three KPI to be pay extreme attention to. Your booking rate is the total amount of leads compared to the total amount of bookings created. Heavily dependent on skill, tech, contact rate, lead type, work ethic, and a ton of other stuff. Booking rates are an all-encompassing metric on the very, very front end, on the top of funnel. And there's many things that can decrease your booking rate. Um, uh, strategy, of course, uh, but in general, contact rate. And that could also be um, uh, tech, phone numbers getting marked to spam, your dialer's dial rate, the type of leads that you're calling. Um, a lot of different factors on the front end with booking rate. Um, but uh, they're knowing what can affect booking rate. We actually went over this in uh, a virtual solar club live training today. I, uh, I went into a bit more detail about what can affect booking rate and all the different aspects of it. Very important to keep in mind. Heavy indication that tech and script, not just the script though, the tonality and just um, your strategy in general are set up correctly. You have a high booking rate relative to the type of lead that you're hitting. That means that you're doing something good there. Um, the next metric, however, show rate, may sometimes actually uh, kick that back. 
Uh, and I'll explain why in a sec here. But your show rate is the total amount of SAT appointments, SAT appointments compared to the total bookings. Generally, the most challenging KPI to hit for beginners in remote solar sales. If anyone's ever sold virtually before, you know when you're starting out, this is definitely the, the, the most difficult to actually hit. Um, and it's also an extremely strong indication of overall appointment setting skills and closability of the appointment. Um, it's uh, certainly one of the most indicating KPIs. If someone has a low show rate, I can almost guarantee I know what their issue is right off the bat. I can probably uh, say what they're saying on the appointment setting call before even listening to the call recording. Show rate is probably, mm, it's difficult because there's only three, but I would say it's tied for most important uh, with close rate. So uh, top two out of three. Uh, but, but, but generally the most challenging KPI to hit, an extremely strong indication of overall appointment setting skills. I'm gonna get into that in a sec, going through the, uh, the standards of what that should be, and then we'll get into some interesting examples as well. Close rate. Obviously, the total amount of closed deals compared to the total qualified sits. Uh, I always like to make that distinction because it's really important for our analytics later to uh, only include objectively qualified sits in there. I'll get into what I define as a qualified sit in a sec here. A uh, very strong indication of closing script and appointment setting skill script. So close rate really encompasses everything. Um, however, it is very possible to have a super high close rate, but a low booking rate and a low show rate. It's, it, I love how everything is interconnected and it's gonna start to make a lot of sense what everything means when we take a look at some examples here. But those are the big three in terms of the definitions of those big three. Uh, here's some honorable mentions. Uh, average conversation time, this is pretty important. Um, I can take a look at someone's average conversation time over a given period and I can determine if uh, they're, I can generally say if you, if you show me your average conversation time and the lead type that you have, I can probably guess how long you've been doing remote solar sales. Uh, so highly dependent on lead type. Obviously if you're dialing cold leads like everyone should start out with, you're gonna have a lower average conversation time at least to start. Um, and a higher average con uh, conversation time generally indicates the appointment setting skill level. Beginners will have a very low average conversation time. Super important metric, um, so that's why it's an honorable mention. Bill collection rate, I love this metric because it's like all very similar to show rate. Bill collection rate is, is generally pretty damn close to show rate. Um, however, uh, it is a super, super um, strong indication that the appointment's actually gonna show. If you're an hour, two hours away from an appointment, they actually haven't sent your bill through and uploaded it through to you, then strong indication that you didn't do the appointment setting cor call correctly and uh, they probably won't show. So it's a very interesting uh, thing to use. You can use this out in appointment filtration when you're trying to determine whether to give a closer an appointment, um, like something that we're working on in Cinevo right now. Uh, using the bill being accepted is a very, very uh, good um, uh, uh, a piece of data there to determine whether that appointment is, is worthwhile distributing to a closer. And cancellation rate, obviously. A strong indication of cooldown skill. Uh, but what generally you're going to find is people with a, um elite close rates, very, very high close rate, you'll often find that they'll, they'll have a higher cancellation rate. Not always, but you will find that they have a slightly higher cancellation rate. Now, there's a... There's a maximum, right? I don't care how high your close rate is. If you're hitting over like 33 to 40% cancellation, it doesn't matter. Um, but the reason this happens a lot, the correlation is because people that are elite closers are very, very good at super assumptive um, closes. And sometimes that can bleed over into steamrolling and just uh, overtaking in, uh, your customer. So that's why you will uh, often see a slightly increased cancellation rate. However, the opposite is true. If you show me someone that has a 0% cancellation rate, nine times out of 10, if they have enough volume and they've been doing this for a long enough time, they I can almost guarantee that they have a ridiculously low uh, close rate. The reason they'll have a 0% cancellation rate over a, a, a long period of time with an, uh, enough experience is because they're only closing the uh, low hanging fruit and the low hanging fruit that don't cancel, right? So there is a, a certainly a, a, an inverse correlation on both ends there but really interesting data anyway. We're not gonna be going into these today, but uh, honorable mentions for sure.